Not a single story in our media about how historic 2018 was in the election of a four-way minority government. You know how media will pick up last place you talked? So if you won the Stanley Cup and it's the start of the next season, they'll talk about who won the Stanley Cup the year before. Or if you've published a new book, they'll talk about the other books that you've published before. But here we are, a whole month of coverage and barely a peep about the historic event that happened in New Brunswick two years ago. Why is that? Also missing from media coverage are the eight independent candidates. Artie Watson down in St. John is one of those examples. How is it that that's a choice you have as a voter, but media make no mention of independent candidates? And quick little footnote, the original structure for New Brunswick's legislature was independent candidates. No political parties. Also remember, it wasn't the MLAs that were frustrated with how things were going in a four-way minority government. The MLAs actually reported that things are going quite well. After 18 months, they were starting to get their wheels under them and figure out how to work together. It were the people that weren't elected that were frustrated. The backroom gang, those that you never get to vote for, who tend to have the greatest influence on decisions in this province. Mainstream media and political pollsters are at it again this election. They were wrong in 2018. And did you notice afterward, they never apologized. If you were in a relationship with someone and they misled you and then never apologized afterward when they were caught, would you still trust them? And yet here we are in 2020 in an election and media are leaning on pollsters for copy and for storylines. So remember, here's what pollsters said in 2018, just before voting day, like today. And they forecasted a very large liberal majority. So here's the pollsters' projections that they published today, one day before the 2020 election. And they're forecasting a large conservative majority to the degree of 99% confidence in this. See anything similar in these two storylines? What do you think will happen tomorrow? Or do you trust media and pollsters to be accurate? Connected to this, why have media not reported on social media presence? Consider it's 2020, the large impact that social media have on election campaigns. And nothing. And yet, if you take a quick look, this is what you'll find. People's Alliance have 7,800 followers. Green Party has 6,700 followers. Liberals have 5,600 followers, and the Conservatives have 4,900 followers. Now, if you're willing to play a little bit with the impact of social media on elections and getting message out and talking with people and connecting with people, how is it then that this is not factored into the 2020 New Brunswick election in mainstream media? Is it because it's opposite to the polls? It's pretty clear by now that Jacques Poitra of CBC has a bias against the People's Alliance Party of New Brunswick, especially around the language issue. It would take a full hour show to bring up all the examples that I found over this election period where that slant or that framing comes into play. But for the sake of this video clip, we'll just do one example. Now, here's a story on language which focused on Michelle Conroy, the People's Alliance MLA up in Miramichi. Notice the tagline just under the headline, and it creates a negative tone right away, despite her stance on bilingualism. Now, note this. It's a feature story, 1,500 words or more, and was the only story of that length on the People's Alliance. In one previous story, he managed to sneak in a reference to the core party, which has nothing to do with People's Alliance, no connection as a political group, and core party is long since defunct. 1995 is when they went out of existence. But regardless, Poitras managed to attach it to PANB by sticking it in at the end of the story, which would make you, the reader, kind of associate those two things together. And then he does this full-length feature story on Michelle Conroy and the issue of language in the province and the role People's Alliance play in that conversation. 
according to his perspective. Any other mention of People's Alliance in the media has garnered maybe 100 to 150 words. At the very front of the story is this perspective offered by Mr. Poitra. In a political party that made criticism of official bilingualism a central tenet of its platform in 2018. This is simply not true. But once said, Poitras successfully incites the emotional response and inflames the language tensions. For the record, and based on three interviews I've had with Mr. Austin, the leader of the People's Alliance Party, and in doing research on People's Alliance Party, which is online, which goes back to the social media presence again. The party wants to explore and discuss duality, duality in services, access to employment to be fair and balanced. They support official bilingualism and sustaining the Francophone culture. Point final. Conspicuous by its absence, then, is why did Poitra not once bring up this in his coverage of language in this election? Why? Is it okay to try to paint PANB in 2020 with a core paintbrush from 1995, but leave out Mr. Higgs as a member of the core party during that period of time with the specific goal to establish one official language, which is English? Now, I'm not talking about language here. I'm not talking about PANB or conservative. I'm talking about the coverage and how they leave stuff out so that you don't know. And it could have been part of that story, especially given that he brought up core party in a previous article and could have tied that to Mr. Higgs' early start in politics. And you have to wonder why. As a final thought before voting tomorrow, we are in a time of great transitions. It's all around us. I'm sure you feel it, whether it's a pandemic, economic changes, climate changes. We are in a moment of transition from 2010 to 2030. The way things have always been done don't work anymore, and they don't see us towards the future. They don't lead us into 2040. We're in a moment where we need to create a new model. There's a great quote by Buckminster Fuller, and it goes like this. We are called to be architects of the future not its victims. So voting is emotional. Let that emotion be beautiful and let it nurture our collective soul. Be beautiful when you vote tomorrow. Be good. Have fun. Love each other.